Hello, welcome back to Banu Sushi Live Noting. Um, the other day I was looking for a way to uh, kind of make a repeat tile for procedural texture and I stumbled into this Blender Stack Exchange and there is one question that's related to what I'm doing. Um, this is actually for Cycles procedural textures and there is a great answer here uh, by what's his name? by Jerry no? yeah and it explains how you can kind of repeat the tile uh, for example in this case the the Musgrave texture uh, basically you have you tile it into four and then you kind of flip it um, into something that's symmetrical in four directions and this is probably what we need and I'm thinking to do the same thing but I might do more cycles material at some point, but for now I'll, I'll try to make something like this. And there's also answer here by Bartek, and this is a much simpler fashion. I, I really like this setup, and this is something that I will do actually, um, like um, a grid of vector points, and then using this simple setup, we can kind of fractal looking texture. So that's actually what I had here. Um, if I remove all this array. So this is um, the textures working as displacement and everything happens in real time. This is only like um, 100 by 100 point sampling of a grid. And using this setup, turning it into, there, there are three possibilities that I could think of. The first one is um, this one with a colorful one if you want to displace the points in three directions XYZ and also this is like the grayscale version I'm using the grayscale version here to display this um, to demonstrate this setup I put the link down here and I will give you this file but I'll, I'm gonna build, in, uh, build the whole thing from scratch and yeah and let's see how it goes so delete everything jump into compositing. I have the latest spare chalk here. I'm gonna save it as spare chalk alien tile procedural and then I'll pro rename it at some point. So I'll probably leave this for now and I'll start with a, a grid viewer draw Okay, top view, and I'll make this 100 by 100, maybe too large. So I'm gonna do it just 48 by 48. By default, this plane looks like this, but I'm gonna center it so we have the plane exactly centered. And what we're gonna do is to to use the points of these planes to generate our procedural texture. Okay, so we need texture viewer. We have two. Probably the one that I'll be using is the texture viewer, this one. And there is a black and white RGB, RGB. We need the RGB. And we're gonna use the user customized. We have 48 by 48. So that's what I'm gonna do. 48 by 48 samples. And we're gonna have uh, 48 by 48. Uh, 48 uh, samples points to work with so we if we are if we provide like a noise vector noise I will be using and if we pass in this uh, vertices this is a grid of points right if we pass it in into this guy and look at the noise as the result we're gonna get something that's looking like this just uh, like a noise texture there it's a bit small but that's okay and we can actually use pass with pass it will pass it as an image and you can look at it slightly larger so that's uh, that's nice so we can we can play around even with this we can use a vector math and here using multiply by scalar and kind of make make the points distance smaller or larger larger you get like totally like noisy but if you get 
closer, you, you start to see the pattern. This is the Perlin, standard Perlin pattern, of course. There's a new Perlin pa pattern that you can play around with. And this is in RGB. And with Fetchalk, of course, you can use this uh, vector noise and just, uh, just add it to the original points. And you're going to push the points in, in three directions, x, y, z. So you get this. So that's kind of nice. Uh, for what we are doing, we're really uh, just experimenting with uh, this formula right here. Uh, not some kind, not formula, it's some kind of um, algorithm in a way, like uh, just math. Multiply cosine and A cosine. Yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. So that I was, the other day I was playing around with it and I get a nice result based on this. So vector out, we're going to separate the vector into its, its xyz value. The z itself is actually um, 0 by default. It doesn't change much, but the x and the y is changing because it's grid. It's a grid of points. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the math. And this is going to be multiplier. And it's going to be cosine. And this one, a cosine, arc, arc cosine, okay. So this x goes in there, we have the multiplier, and then this goes in here, and this goes in there. And that's actually pretty much what we need, I think. And we can combine them together using factor in. So the x, the y, the z we can leave it. The z is going to be like uh, something we can push. So for the multiplier, uh, this is actually from the y. For the multiplier, we this is like an extra layer. Uh, we can use float and plug this guy in there. And now let's look at the result. Simply plug this into that guy. And we have this kind of um, pattern. This, this actually looks like... Um, it looks like a pattern that you find on a on a cloth. We are already actually starting to get our alien looking pattern. So this I think we need some kind of vector math. Somewhere did I miss okay vector math for our plane? This is gonna be multiplied by scalar. So we can control our noise. Okay, and oh, okay, we have another multiplier here, which is actually giving like a more interesting result. Like kind of the noise go more and more into details. I think we are getting there. So I really like this. Um, this really like psychedelic pattern here that we have. This can be very useful and of course this guy is kind of al already tileable but since it's disturbing the texture in in four directions you get this uh, edges kind of being disturbed as well and probably that's not what you want. You want it you want to push it only in 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 the normal directions if you are doing it on the on the plane. So I'm gonna save this, and if we just want to disturb the normal, then we need to just deal with a vector noise as a, as a grayscale. So I'm gonna duplicate this guy, and this is gonna be our for other things to generate this texture. And this goes in here, but as the output, we want it as a scalar. Okay, so, and the next thing we want to do is to use a vector normal, vertex normal nodes, and pipe in the points and polygon face, and we get the normal here. So we have the original points plus the normal, but we also need to multiply it using the scalar. So, 
think vector move is probably what we need. So we have the original vertices and we have the normal and we push it using this multiplier and which is coming from the noise. And as a result, this uh, normalized value goes into the add and 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 this original points should be from there this one goes from here to there so we have the normal push okay okay now we are getting somewhere so is this correct the correct way to do it i think or there, there can be a better way to do this like uh, displace along normal this is a uh, three nodes to do one thing we can actually just frame it control j so this is actually one processing and we can use math this is going to be another multiplier for the push okay so and if you want to see a better visualizations goes to orthographic and instead of using viewer draw I will be using viewer vmesh plug the points there and plug the polygon face data into this guy there you go and this is a real object now and you can use uh, matcap normal and if you like you can also use this in combination with uh, array modifier and do it in both x, x and y 0 1 so we have this pattern and this is just 48 by 48 points you can go higher 64 by 64 maybe but if you if you're making any changes make sure you also change the this sampling number so let's say it's 44 by 40, uh, 64 by 64 and this guy gonna be 64 by 64 as well now this matte cap doesn't have proper coloring okay I need to reset that okay now this is 64 by 64 sampling and we get this result which is quite nice so yeah you can further on play around with this and then perhaps instead of using vector noise using a vector turbulence node or make your own functions algorithm that's kind of work with this so the whole setup now looking something like this quite clean quite simple and this is basically using this idea right here so I'm gonna save this I always like to leave this uh, some kind of credits original source so there you go this is stack blender 3d 3d stack exchange so now using this setup um, using spreadshock add-on you can generate some kind of alien texture here it, it is actually actually tileable so it's quite nice so we can use procedural noise and we can since we are like kind of cement making a symmetry in four in a many directions we get we can get this guy right here and if you want to do further I'm gonna save this and then file uh, gonna file save as you can if you want to do further instead of using a plane you can use anything like uh, maybe icosphere plug this into that guy the points and the polygon face and the point you're gonna get some kind of wild pattern happening so that cap maybe what did I do before oh okay now we're getting that kind of uh, weirdness but anyhow this noise should update itself can increase this guy perhaps increase subdivision well solid texture 
Maybe I need a coin. Okay, okay, this is uh, getting somewhere. See, you can can get this kind of very alien-looking kind of surface. I don't know. I think there's a uh, there's a lot to explore here. Um, definitely give it a try and see what you can come out with. There you go. You can get that happening. Well, anyway, uh, this is like if you are doing it in 3D and then you start to look. Uh, okay, this is because vector noise kind of works in the 3D. So you can get this result, and you can always push the Z. That I almost forgot to say that. If you push the Z, you can you can randomize uh, the noise, it's kind of swimming through, and then it's changing pattern. You get this uh, quite wild looking result. I might render this out at some point. But anyhow, this is pretty much it. I'm gonna maybe save this as well. Thanks again for tuning in, and thanks for this uh, Blender Stack Exchange. Whoever asked the question and answer it always an inspiration. Uh, there's a lot of gems here. So hopefully this is useful for you. Uh, let's see what you can come up with. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Bye.